Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast here with Benji Nyson. The show is supported by Le Col, the rumour mill during the Tour de France. Peter Sagan, apparently, as reported by Villa Flitz, who are usually pretty accurate, to be honest, on these sort of things, will join Team Total Energy. They're rebranding, not Total Direct Energy. Team Total Energy is not even be one word. So, uh, Specialised will also apparently be joining, will be coming with Sagan for joining the team. Uh they're currently riding billiard bikes, so they'll move to Specialized. So that'll be Quick Step, Bora, and Total Energy. Now, they're a pro-continental team, and it's kind of a following the trend of these riders who are, I want to say past it, but they're not at their peak anymore, going to these team, pro-conti teams. as big-name signing on big money. I don't know what the terms are with Sagan at Total Energy, but one would expect it's uh, – He's going there for the money, not the team support, Benji, uh, given that you've had a look at the team for 2022 and there's not that much support around him. Yeah, certainly. They've got Bonifazio, for example, still there. Then a lot of French people. La Tour, the, the main name really, Turgui as well, and Viermos. The others are Soup, Ferron, Duby, and Bugodo, and Genies. And then you've got the Spaniard, Cristiano Rodriguez. So in total, not too many riders that are currently assigned and... That begs the question, where are the riders that are currently in that team going? You've got Evel Bosenheim, who just throw the from the Tour de France. He is not on the uh, list for next year yet. Is he going to stay or not? Stuff like that. He's probably on a relatively decent contract, I'd say, knowing he's a, he was a big name in the past. Then Nicky Terstra joined them the year after he had that wonderful year at Quickstep. And that begs the question, he's not on the list yet for next year either. Is he staying with the team or is he one of the riders that must go to open up the potential costs for Sagan and allow a Sagan move to happen, stuff like that. And in general, I think that you're right. There's not too much support for him here. He is bringing support though, because as usual, Sagan has his compatriots, his his musketeers, his entourage. (laughs) He's got um, himself, of course, Daniel Oz as well. Maciek Bodnar, we've got Erik Bashka and his brother Juraj Sagan that are apparently all joining the French formation of Total Energy. And next to that, obviously, a lot of people surrounding Sagan, social media people and just probably managers and so forth, stuff like that. So a lot of people joining Total Energy just because Sagan is joining. Probably a lot of money is involved and that begs the question, is the money worth it? On a performance standpoint and on a marketing standpoint, I think the second one, they're probably gaining their money's worth. On the first one, it's going to be difficult to uh, get that value out of Sigan, I think, for the next couple of years with the support that this team offers, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I think Terji is their second best rider after Sigan, and maybe in some races, Terji in the classics, he's looked very, very good. I mean, Sagan, despite having COVID at the start of this year, yeah. He had a disrupted training last year. I'm giving his 2020 a pass, but he's been on a steady decline from, say, obviously like 2012, 13 is climbing. He's just absolutely cracked. Like some of the races he won was just insane ahead of like Joaquin Rodriguez in uphill finishes. And then he went classics and it focused on classics and then back to back to back world championships. But then after 17, I know he won Paris Bay in 2018, but generally, not as strong in 2019 and yeah it's been a bit of a steady decline and then you've seen he's won some he's won some good races this year well he's won he's gone to the right races he catalonia he went to one stage six ahead of not the strongest sprint field you'll ever see i think he beat Darolimpi. then tour de romandy uh he climbed reasonably well but he was sprinting against you know big bevan there and then tour de france oh sorry he went to the giro it's actually good in the sprints. And then he won a stage there ahead of Gaviria, more on, I think, smarts as well. Tour de France got crashed out by Ewan, or crashed by Ewan, had an infected. He, he then had surgery on his knee apparently, like the last few days because he got infected. So he's riding the whole Tour de France with a bit of a, like a wound in his knee. So he's, he gets a pass for that. But what I want to focus on, Benji, is going back, if you can remember that Catalonia win. That win didn't happen just because Sagan was the best. The team was also important on that day, controlling the break, closing down. There were a lot of attacks, and they had strong riders like Ida Schelling. uh, Who else? Yeah, Schelling and Kemner, Jordi Meus, 
closing down attacks. And the question will be whether, and then in Azura, Benji, what the stage he won, bore a paste on that climb, even with Bookman, right? So yeah, exactly. can, can, he's a guy who wins reduced bunch sprints primarily, unless he, the random breakaway day. Do you really think Total Energy can like turn a race upside down like that or control it? Because I don't really see it on the current roster. I think there's a few riders in their teams that can offer very good support, like a Turgi and a Latour. But the problem is Latour, he's likely going to want to do other stuff than be of service to Sagan's potential stage wins. He's going to try and ride a GC or go for stage wins in, in mountain stages, stuff like that. So whether those will be complementary to each other, those two riders is going to be a, an interesting process. But also in those stages you mentioned, the competition there was not too insane. And I think that what we've seen in these Grand Tours is like you mentioned on the climbs that Bora was pacing with Aliotti and so forth at the Giro on these sprint stage with hills with about 20k to go to make sure that the real sprint is like yeah. a Merlier and so forth would drop initially. A Nizolo, like you mentioned. And in all honesty, that's where I think this team is lacking. And it's going to be hard to overcome that barrier because that's what led to the majority of Sagan's good performances the last year in Grand Tour sprint stages because those were reduced sprints. Those were not sprints between the top sprinters. Sagan cannot beat a top sprinter at the moment. And that is because he has the ability to follow the wheels and he can do that perfectly. But what he's missing right now is a kick to get past people in the last 50 meters. And that's what you need to win stages at the top level of sprints. And right now he doesn't have that. And that's why he's most likely like this year, going to end in the wheels of the people who win a lot of the times. And I think that we'll see him win a few times per year. I think that Total Energy also is more likely to ride one of those lower French races as preparation as well in their Britannia home classic. regions, perhaps. I didn't really consider that one of the lower French races, but I was looking more at like a <laughs> Provence, but not 2021 <laughs> version, for example. True. Because 2021 was pretty special in that aspect as it was basically in a period where everybody wanted to ride races. Yeah. These other races were getting cancelled. I think that that might benefit Sagan into getting more lower value sprint wins, which I think is worth it if you're trying to prep someone for bigger races to have them have a few easy wins here and there to get that feeling of winning again going and then go towards a race like the Tour de France with him as your candidate for Unlikely the green jersey, but a stage win for the team would be nice. And I think the benefit with Sagan compared to a transfer like Viviani back in the day from the Koenig to Coffet is, is that Viviani had to get over climbs to do well in sprints, and that's not happening with Viviani most of the time. And, and he needs to with train. Sagan, yeah, exactly. You're right. And while Viviani's better flat sprint in my eyes than Sagan, I see just no, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm well, scared he, that it might become like Viviani at Cofidis. Uh, here's the problem. Or, yeah, Nairo at Arkea, I'm not sure. It's not gone as well as it could have, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But here's the problem. Total Energy, they have five wins this year, all at one, one, two, or two, one level. So they've got two Spanish races I hadn't heard of before, or Asturias I had, and then Tudor Wonder. They won those uh, two stages in, in the GC. So that, that's not great. They're not even knocking on the door of dot pro wins. I mean, Terzius Classics was good, just didn't have much help. I think Sagan can still whip out a yep. random Classics result where you're like, what the hell? Like Milano San Romo fourth. I was like, holy, after just having COVID, that was a, such a good result, fourth at Milano San Remo. He can contest for the green jersey. He can still be top five in Tour de France sprints. The problem is they're signing him and paying money to take him to the Tour de France. I think the Giro and Vuelta suits Sagan so much more than the Tour de France, but he has to do the Tour because he's Sagan on big money at a French pro-continental team. And yeah, that's that's the problem really. So he's either going to be peaking for one or the other or, or whatever happens. I mean, this year he did the Giro and Tour and he got that, it was kind of a perfect balance. He got the Giro stage yeah, win and then... Will yeah. Total get the wild card for True. multiple well, ground tours and that's where i think it's lacking even with 
Sagan, he's not Italian and the team is not Italian, so they're less likely to be sent to the Giro because the Giro goes for Italian teams and the Spanish uh, Grand Tour La Vuelta goes for Burgos and so forth and Cajarural and Oiscaltel sometimes, stuff like that. So good luck trying to get in between that. And like they've got Alpecin now getting that automatically by being the top pro Conti team. And I don't see Total Energy getting that, not even next year with Van der Poel staying at Alpecin, so stuff like that. I think and that venue, they can make a step happy, up, though. Happy with him, yeah. right? And Venue wasn't happy with him. I don't him. remember. <laughs> they paid him. Remember they paid him to come in 2020 or something? Yeah. And he yeah. was like, not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came for free the next year. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but like, I do think that they can make a step up when it comes to results. You mentioned it. They have low level wins right now, Total Energy. And I think Sagan can be the key to getting a dot pro win, to getting a few Walter wins, one or two or three in the season, perhaps. And that is definitely worth it for a team like that, but they could also do that by investing those, I think the rumor was eight million or something, in other riders that can also get those results. Wait, and eight million. Yeah. The the whole like for everybody. For everybody? Specialized no. was doing most of it. No way. I read that somewhere. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they can't be doing that. Eight million. Well, I think that I think Lefebvre said that when <laughs> he you. was denying. Okay, perhaps that's a good reason. Lefebvre said, it, "Okay, Benji Sauce, Patrick Lefebvre, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this lucky we're not actually journalists." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think Lefebvre said it when he said when he rejected that he would be able to pay for Sagan. <laughs> It's probably three million. No, but <laughs> even so, it's going to be healthy seven figures regardless. I mean, no, yeah. but Sagan was like five million, right? His salary this year. Yeah, but surely should take a pay cut. Well, maybe that's not how these things work. I mean, yeah, performance wise, I can think of a whole myriad of ways and riders to sign to get better results and more world tour wins. But that's uh, it's probably beyond me. Sagan has a lot of marketing, but yeah, we'll wait to see if he inks the deal. It's still a rumor at this point. Um, Benji and I, I don't think are going to. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not expecting the revitalization of Sagan to be then like. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. So. Um, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what see what happens. Kind of sad he's going to Sol Energy. I wanted him to go to a different team. Me too. Yeah, I would have liked to see him. I mean, he's won so much, but maybe he just he has won so much. He's been riding for so long. Maybe just like oh, I can go here, be the man. And, you know, where else would he have gone, Benji? Like, quick step? How would that even work? No idea. I don't know. Trek Segafredo. <laughs> Just a, thinking about... It's another retirement about, though, for, yeah. for Sharks. But, uh, to Astana, because, like, <laughs> they've got trouble when it comes to filling up their team next season, it seems. True. Astana, would, I mean, they would have been a really good team, Benji, with Freyla and co. To And with Nibali going back, because Nibali and Sigan were at Liquigas together. Yeah. If it's true that Nibali is going to Astana again... And Sagan joins that, it would have been so perfect, but Astana ain't paying for that because they... I don't they, think they have the money, no. No. Nah. Anyway, that's the Sagan rumor. Let us know what you think down below. Is it going to be a disaster? Is he going to come back, win Milano San Remo after all this time and, and be back? We'll see. World Championships, he's looking... Actually, I think he could do pretty well there, but until, uh, until he signs on the dotted line, we'll do another podcast when that happens to get two bites at the Apple. Till then, ciao.